Mark, tell me first off what you make of the more optimistic uh, tone for President Trump. Is this a reason to see that maybe gold has topped out? Uh, yeah, I'd say probably led to some profit taking uh, in, in the very short term, obviously. But I, I think given the, the developments, I was listening to you chatting there, Matt, uh, a development over the weekend at G7, I, I mean, gold should be up 1% or 2%, uh, given the, the degree of I suppose, uncertainty in the world created by the, uh, you know, what's happened at the G7 and, and Trump's tweets in terms of Powell uh, and, 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 and President Xi. And, and, and also just the trade war seemed to be escalating, unfortunately, not, not, not de-escalating. Uh, we all I'd hope, hope that the G7 people would come together and talk and, and, and start coming up with some, uh, you know, solutions uh, and, and roll back from the, the more uh, protectionist uh, direction that we're heading in. But unfortunately, obviously, the mood music is, is not that at all. And, and, and it seems to be escalating in terms of Mercosur now and the EU and what's happening in the rainforest. It's all been joined together. What's happened in the rainforest, the environmental co uh, concerns, uh, rightly so, are now uh, being conflated with the trade wars, you know, and, and Brazilian beef. So it's, it's very, very uncertain. And it, it, it's in the short term, I, I think you're right, we could even see more profit taking. Gold is overvalued in the short term. I think we're about 8% in August alone. Mark, so you would expect Mark, a pullback. Uh, gold but I think prices have been moved term, looks, by comments by President safe. Trump. And so I'll just jump in with uh, to say that President Trump is arriving at the G7. We've already seen him taking part in that press conference a little bit earlier on. Today, he was uh, talking with the Egyptian president, uh, El Sisi. Today, we see him arriving for that press conference in Biarritz. Uh, th so these pictures coming to us live from Biarritz in France. Not making any comments at this point. He said a lot already this morning. The red headline across the Bloomberg certainly moved gold prices. It moved risk assets as well. Uh, and, and so, Mark, then you saying perhaps we have topped out in the short term. What about gold volatility? I've got a chart here on the Bloomberg which uh, uh, shows the extent of the surge that we we've seen in gold volatility over the last couple of months. Is that something you expect to see continue, Mark? It is, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, unfortunately, the, the more uncertain the world is, uh, the more gold likes it. it. It is a barometer of risk. So as as risk increases in the world uh, and as the trade wars appear to be escalating and economies slow down, then more demand comes into the gold market and you see more volatility. But I think uh, investors need to look at it in terms of the, the overall volatility of a portfolio. And gold is actually a hedge. It tends to, to gain when, when stocks come off. And we've seen that again this year, the last 12 months, the last uh, year to date. Um, so uh, it, it actually decreases the, the volatility of the overall portfolio. So that's the, the benefit of gold. And it actually increases the, the return of the portfolio over the medium and long term. So that, that, that's the case there for potentially it, it might be time to consider for investors who don't have an allocation to gold, which is most investors in the world, they should potentially consider reducing allocations if they're overweight. It depends. E each portfolio is different and people need to take proper advice. But if they're overweight stocks and bonds right now, it might be a time to reduce allocations to those risk assets and have an allocation to, to, to gold. Mark, one of the things, you know, for a long time, um, investors w would rather get a return on, for example, treasuries, but obviously as the interest rate drops, then gold becomes more attractive. You do still have to pay either a cost, a management fee for an ETF or a fund um, or a cost to hold the gold. What do you think is the best way to invest in gold? Well, I suppose it depends on your motivation. Uh, if you're buying purely for return and, and for performance, then and, and you have a sort of a short-term time frame, and you're looking purely for to exposure to the price, then the ETFs are not a bad way to go. You know, for short-term exposure because uh, they are very low cost. But I think for investors who are looking to hedge the the risks that we see in the world today, you know, quite significant macroeconomic risks, systemic risks, and indeed monetary risks, I think the Unfortunately, the net result of these trade wars, it's going to feed into the currency wars. So that speaks to owning actual physical gold in a, in a vault. And, uh, and what we're seeing in, 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 in recent months is, is not there's not a huge, the retail investor suddenly isn't buying gold. Uh, the taxi drivers out there in, in London and in Dublin are not suddenly buying gold. Uh, it, it is very much uh, the smart money. Uh, people who bought gold before the, the last crisis are buying gold again today because they're, they're nervous about the outlook. So it's a, we're seeing a lot of repeat business, a lot of uh, conversion business actually people who've bought ETFs, mm. they get familiar with the ETF and then they realize the ETF, it, it's not the safest way in the world in terms of the counterparty risk that is in the ETFs. 